Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu from Masjid Al Aqsa. Welcome to the Masjid Al Aqsa complex. I'm currently sitting just in front of the Dome of the Rock, uh, which is one of the most monumental sites here in all of uh, the Masjid Al Aqsa complex. The Aqsa complex is huge. Um, we have many monuments within it. The Dome of the Rock is one of the most kind of um, iconic sites. So I thought it'd be nice to sit in front of the Dome of the Rock and tell you guys a little bit about travel tips, um, safety tips, and uh, also answer uh, questions that a lot of people had. Now, when I traveled here, I traveled here um, uh, in the end of June, um, and I'm going to be leaving in, uh, today is the 1st of July. I asked a question to many of my Instagram followers, um, uh, about what they what they would like to know about Masjid Al-Aqsa and I was actually assuming that many people would be asking me um, about the history of the prophets um, they'd be asking me around things like um, uh, about the Masjid Al-Aqsa complex uh, but to my surprise I actually found that 90% of the questions were surrounded um, were, were around um, the idea of safety um, uh, and and majority of the questions from those questions were related to um, airport safety so having seen all those questions i thought to myself you know what it's probably for the best that i make a video and um, share with you guys so you guys can keep this video on you and you can share it with other people so how you can travel to masjid al-aqsa um, in this day and age in 2023 24 25 um, however um, along these worries um, are with us so what i've done is i've um, collected uh, a certain amount of questions now you may have to wait for me to answer your questions uh, because obviously this is going to be a uh, this is a recorded video not a live um, but i will get to your questions um, and what i've done is i've put in the description uh, the minute for a certain type of question like so for example if you want to know specifically about a specific thing um, uh, for example uh, what questions they ask you at the airport then you can go into the description you can check what minute it is and take it from there inshallah just to make it a bit easier for you guys so you don't have to listen to all the questions but if you want um, feel free to uh, listen to the entire video and um, inshallah hopefully it'll be beneficial and maybe you can share it with other people as well so they can benefit before i start i do want to say bismillah alhamdulillah salatu wa salam ala rasulillah Masjid Al-Aqsa is an amazing place, honestly. Um, the peace and serenity that you feel here is beyond anywhere else. Makkah and Medina have their very own atmosphere, but Masjid Al-Aqsa is, is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, whether you come here knowing a lot about the history or not, uh, a mu'min, a believer, when he or she enters the courtyard of the Masjid of Masjid Al-Aqsa. Now, remember one thing, the Masjid Al-Aqsa is surrounded by the old city, which is hustling and bustling. As soon as you enter into the Aqsa complex, you feel this wonderful, wonder, absolutely wonderful feeling of peace. And so, Masjid Al-Aqsa should not be viewed as a place of chaos or a place of, you know, uh, tension. Whilst the problems exist in this country, Masjid Al-Aqsa for the large part is a safe haven for the Muslims. It's a sanctuary. It, this is the reason why it's called Haram. And I also wanted to touch on a few things which are quite important to mention. Some of you may know, some of you may not know. Is that this is the only place, the only place for, in my knowledge that all 124, some say 127, whichever it is, um, prophets prayed here. There's no single inch in Al-Quds except that prophets prayed in here. And this is a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I thought it's imp important to mention that before I actually go on and talk about the safety tips. And most importantly, Masjid Al-Aqsa was the first Qibla in Islam. So we normally, we as Muslims, we face towards uh, the Kaaba. But did you know for many, many months, the Muslims actually faced towards Bayt al-Maqdis as their Qibla, which it was the first Qibla. And it was the second house of Allah on earth. And in tradition, prophetic traditions, we find 
that the, the, the Kaaba was uh, constructed first by Adam al-Islam and there was some many decades gap and then Bayt al-Maqdis, Masjid al-Aqsa was, was, was constructed. And what's more amazing about Masjid al-Aqsa and really to bring you all home is that Masjid al-Aqsa was one of those, it was, it was a place that the Prophet sallallahu actually came to himself um, on a miraculous night journey. And regarding Masjid al-Aqsa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِي بَارَكْنَا حَوْلَهُ لِنُرِيَهُ مِنْ آيَاتِنَا That we have blessed the surroundings. And wallahi, when you come here, you actually feel the, the blessedness, the, the, this, 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 like I was talking about, this peace and tranquility and this serenity uh, whilst, you're, whilst you're here in the masjid and around uh, the courtyard. So that's something that I wanted to touch on slightly before I go on and talk uh, about, the, uh, about the questions. Highly recommend that whatever I'm about to say, um, I'm saying it now, I'm gonna say after the questions are answered, make your intention to come here because this is the time that Masjid al-Aqsa needs us. Masjid al-Aqsa right now is a very uh, neglected part of um, um, when it comes to, so many people will travel to uh, Mecca and Medina, but usually um, this place goes missed. So that's something that I wanted to touch on. So we'll get on with the questions anyways. Um, first and foremost, we'll quickly cover. Um, so I've got a list of questions here. Just give me one second. So let me just start with... Um, Okay, so I think one of the most, uh, the first and foremost things, one of the most important things to mention here is that uh, normally uh, what tends to happen is when you arrive here first, there are kind of two ways of arriving here. There are, there is the kind of um, the Jordan route. Um, there is also the Tel Aviv route. So if you are coming via Jordan, you normally will land in Amman. Um, once you've landed there, you will take, I think it's a taxi or a shared taxi to um, the King Hussein Bridge Allenby Crossing. Um, I'll put the name of that here as well because I can't remember exactly what it's called. Um, and then from there, um, you will actually um, wait at the border kind of uh, control. Um, and then after a certain amount of time, if there's anything needed to be, if you need to answer any questions, you'll answer questions and then you'll take it from there. And then you can enter. Um, Israel and then from there you can, Jerusalem and then from there you can take uh, either a taxi or um, or a bus or whatever transportation now I don't know much about the kind of Jordan route because I haven't exactly done it before so there's there's that option available you can actually come to Mission Aqsa that way um, the option that I chose was to fly into Tel Aviv now when you do fly into Tel Aviv what tends to happen is um, you will first go through to some kind of uh, scanning machines. Um, you will scan your passport. And what will happen is they'll either give you a, um, like a slip, uh, which counts as, you could say it counts as kind of like a visa, um, or they won't give you that slip. So when they do give you that slip, so this is kind of like a generic question I'm answering around um, what happens at the airport, what happens when you land at Tel Aviv airport. Um, you will be given a kind of like a slip and it counts kind of like a visa and you will your passport will not be stamped whatsoever um and then you will basically whether you get the slip or not you will have to still go to border control uh passport control uh, once you get there uh, you will be um asked questions um if you i'll be honest with you if um if you have got a muslim surname or an arab surname or you visibly look Muslim. Um, uh, this is a collection of kind of like observations and um, advice that have been given by others, my observations as well. So if you look visibly Muslim, uh, you're wearing a headscarf, you're wearing a hat, you have a beard. Um, in any way possible, in any way, sorry, if you have a, if you somehow identify as a Muslim, um, you will 100% um, be stopped. Now, there are some exceptions to that. For example, um, I have noticed that when people actually come here with families, for, when I say family, I mean, for example, um, they're here with their kids, um, they're young, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whatever it is, um, the, guard, the border patrol t tends to be somewhat lenient. So these are some very specific details I'm giving you so that you have um, an understanding and a context in your mind 
Um, so that's very important to keep in mind. Um, I have noticed people who have come here with families and have waltzed through the, the border control. Um, couples, uh, they tend not to kind of keep you that long. Um, and also when it comes to things like, for example, when if you're um, with really extremely old people, they tend to kind of uh, be a little bit more lenient. Now, let me just get one thing really clear here right now, right? You will, waiting at the airport is um, is going to happen for a lot of us, okay? Like I said, if you're Muslim, your surname's uh, kind of Muslim surname, uh, even if you're not Muslim, but you have an Arab surname, um, you will have to wait at the airport. And that's really, really important to keep in mind because um, this is just part and parcel of the experience. Um, don't ask me why. Um, and, and sometimes you'll be questioned, sometimes you won't. Um, I've heard of um, people actually waiting at the airport for half an hour, um, uh, waiting up to nine hours, okay? And it all depends on your context. It all depends on your situation. So, for example, I'll give you an example so you can get, you can start to understand where I'm coming from. Um, I know someone who's worked for a charity um, and they were traveling alone, a male Muslim with a Muslim surname, um, and they had to wait for nine hours. On the other hand, I know someone that was traveling, husband, wife, a son who's 19, and a grandchild who's only nearly two years old. They maybe had to wait for about half an hour. So you get what I'm trying to say here, right? Um, many cases, if you have a really young child, they won't even make you wait anyways. But you get what I'm trying to say. So for example, um, my brother and I came. We had to wait for five and a half hours. And I will get onto the what they ask questions and things like that in a little while. Um, then there's obviously things like, for example, um, if you're coming in a big group. So a lot of big groups come, like 40 people or something. Now, it's quite tedious to start questioning everyone. So what they tend to do is they tend to question a few people and they let them go. Now, let me get, now that I've said that and you understand that, how it works, um, whatever the case, um, you will get through. No, no matter what will happen, you will 99.9% .9 get through. There are very odd uh, exceptions, uh, very random cases where they probably say, oh no, you can't come in or whatever it is. And uh, they can be very exceptional. Um, maybe if uh, you've, you know, I, I really don't know the cases, but you know, it, it's, what I'm trying to say is very, very rare for you to um, not be let in to the country. So keep that in mind um, and, and a few tips and um, some people have said how how can you handle that um, kind of experience and the best way to kind of sum sum it up is you know my brother was I was talking to my brother and he said like there's three things and I'll try to see if I can remember um, so he said firstly number one be prepared in every way okay now I'll break this down a little bit this is key uh, a, a key point one uh, be prepared in every way okay so number one this is very very important be emotionally prepared mentally prepared because the waiting um and like sometimes it's there's two elements to waiting there's waiting and there's questioning um, waiting is for the large part you will be waiting for no reason sometimes there's absolutely no reason you'll be waiting um don't ask me why that happens it's like i said it's just part and parcel of the experience so waiting is a massive part of, um, of 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 uh, flying into the airport, Tel Aviv airport. If you want to come to Laksa, um, so be prepared in every way. So number one, be prepared emotionally. You will be emotionally drained. So if you come prepared beforehand, that you know it will happen, then you will not have any issues. Be prepared in terms of how you comply. Um, don't act cocky with the with the guards if they choose to take you into question if they choose to take you into questioning don't um you know um, be overly friendly don't get angry just answer the questions as per normal um don't go over the top um so i've been to iraq i've been to syria and for charity work i've been to um iraq for tourism purposes and they said tell me about your recent trip to iraq um tell me about your recent trip to syria and i just told them as it was and there was no issues whatsoever. They let me go, albeit after five and a half hours. So keep that in mind. This is really, really important, is that be prepared 
emotionally, mentally, the way you deal with everyone. Um, number um, four, bring food with you. Um, you will get hungry. Some kind of snacks. I've seen quite um, people who have experienced this before having some really tasty snacks with them. Uh, bring a prayer mat with you if you need to pray salah, if it's that time. Uh, entertainment, a book to read, something to listen to. Maybe uh, if you want to watch something, download something on your phone, bring your laptop with you. Just be prepared. So this is key element one. Be prepared in every single way because just assume the worst that you will be waiting for quite a while. The second thing is, um, let's see if I can uh, remember, um, no matter what happens, uh, they will let you in. So it's very, very important to remember that whilst you're sat there, you know, um, uh, going through tension, worrying what's going to happen, they will uh, eventually uh, let you through. Um, and number three, I honestly cannot remember number three. Um, let me see if it comes to me right now. Um, let's see. Um, so I cannot remember number three. But those two, I think what I've done is I've ended up kind of like summing up number three with number one. So I think one of what my brother was trying to say is that be prepared, you'll be emotionally drained, etc. And the, uh, the number three was how you deal with um, officers and things like that. So comply with them, don't get cheeky with them, don't get cocky with them and things like that. So these are some ways of dealing with things at the airport. Just assume the worst, just assume you will have to um, wait at the airport. Now, and, and we'll move on to uh, another question. It says, could you tell me more about what happens at checkpoints? Um, now, okay, so I'm going to be moving from one place uh, to another. Uh, so checkpoints, usually um, you'll come across them. Um, normally what happens, people come either in a massive group or they come by themselves. By themselves, when I say by themselves, they can come literally two people or they can be maybe 10 people, but they're not coming with an actual officially recognized tour group, if you know what I mean. So if that is the case and you are coming with a group, um, then they normally handle checkpoints for you. So you don't have to worry. Um, but if you are coming by yourself um, and you are traveling from one place to another, um, so I traveled myself with my brother uh, via public transport to Bethlehem, to Hebron. There are checkpoints here and there. I'll be honest with you, it's absolutely nothing to worry about because it's, whilst it may kind of pee you off a little bit and get on your nerves a little bit, like, why do I have to show this? Why it's all, you know, whatever. It's just part and parcel of the process. Like this right now, I'm trying to kind of tell people how they can come to Masjid Al-Aqsa um, and how they can get through things. It's not so much about, oh, why, why? Because there's that's not my field. So there are people answering these questions. My Me answering questions is kind of more telling you guys about how you should get through things, how you can travel to Masjid Al-Aqsa. So it's really, really important. Um, they won't ask you any questions at checkpoints. The most they'll probably ask you is where are you going? Where are you from? Enjoy your trip, that kind of stuff. Um, there are checkpoints uh, specifically in a masjid in a place called Hebron. And this is called Masjid Khalil. Um, because Hebron is actually split into two parts. You have H1, H2. Um, so there are settlements in, I think, H2. And so there are checkpoints there. Again, nothing to worry about. I don't get scared when I say checkpoints. It's It's... It's kind of like bittersweet because whilst it's hard for some people here, for tourists, it's actually really, really easy for pil for pilgrims, for visitors. It's extremely easy and they can tell from afar that uh, you're from outside, you're a foreigner and things like that. So yeah, so keep that in mind. There are checkpoints in Hebron and you can actually simply just, um, uh, simply just um, uh, show your passport. I didn't have to show my passport when I went to Hebron, to be honest with you. Um, so it's very, very easy. Um, you just show your passport if they ask for it. They may ask you a few questions. What have you got in your bag? They may check your bags. And that's it, really. So checkpoints are uh, nothing to worry about. Let's see if we can find uh, another question. Um, yeah, this is a really good question. Um, is it safe to come without a group? Absolutely it's safe to come without a group. So many people come without a group. But there is still this fear. Um, and I'll try to combine... Um, no, actually, I'll answer that separately. Another question. But yeah, it's absolutely safe to come without a group. Um, I don't know if you can hear the bells right now from the close by church. There are many churches here. Um, yeah, so anyways, um, uh, yeah, it's absolutely safe to come here by yourself. Um, 
when I say by yourself, I don't mean a lone solo travel. I'll get onto that in a little while. Um, but by yourself, without a tour group, it's absolutely safe. You will ha not have any issues. Yes, you'll have to wait at the airport like everyone else. Um, once you get out of the airport, it's absolutely safe. Everything's fine. Um, you can you can arrange your own public transport um, to get from one place to another. Um, or alternatively, you can um, join a tour group when you get here as well. There are plenty of tour guides who are willing to are willing to help you out here. So that's um, yes, absolutely. You can come without a tour guide. Uh, let's see if you can find uh, another. Um, yeah, let me see. I don't want to put that one. Yeah, let, solo travel. Okay, so solo travel is fine. Okay, there's no issues with solo travel. Okay, now um, from an Islamic point of view, um, for women to travel alone, obviously there are certain schools that uh, permit it, and there are certain schools that won't permit it. Um, I don't know much about this, um, but I will say that consult your local scholar, speak to them about it, and see what they say. Um, those scholars who permit women traveling alone, um, for you, I'm telling you, if you're a woman traveling alone, you can absolutely come to Masjid Al-Aqsa. This is if your scholar permits this. Um, but however, having said that, um, there will be um, uh, more issues in the airport in that they will question you more. Uh, they may make you wait for longer, that kind of stuff. So be ready for that. If you're a solo woman traveling with kids, then it's somewhat of a different story. They may let you in quicker. Um, if you're a solo guy, again, same, similar story. They'll keep you longer. They'll question you more, that kind of stuff. Because they're curious why you're coming by yourself, or even though traveling by yourself is normal in uh, many other parts of the world. Um, yeah, If okay. The next question is, if you're not coming with a group, how do you plan your journey? So the way you do that is you basically um, do it exactly the same way as any other trip, honestly. There's, there's nothing else to it. You book your flights, wherever you book your flights, um, Mamondo, Google Flights, Skyscanner, Expedia, wherever it is. Um, you then book your hotels. Um, there's actually a list of um, Arab-owned hotels. Um, and I've actually put the link of that in the description. Um, so you can, if, if the reason why I'm saying this is because if you want a Muslim friendly hotel, um, the Arab owned hotels are catered for the Muslim kind of Muslim uh, industry, uh, Muslim traveler, halal traveler industry, uh, uh, obviously better. Uh, so obviously there are plenty of other hotels. There are hostels here, there are Airbnbs even here. But if you want to stay at a hotel that's kind of Muslim friendly, halal friendly, the halal food etc that kind of stuff i've put a link for that in the description there's a list of all the hotels what i would recommend doing is look at the hotels and then cross check the prices on whatever website because the website that i've put here is just a list of the hotels it it's not where you can actually book so keep that in mind so that's um uh the question around how you book and then when you get here there's no visa for uk canada america um, which I assume a lot of people are watching this from these countries. If you are traveling from other countries, you'll have to check your government's website to see how it works. But usually visa is free for um, many countries. Uh, you can check this online as well. Uh, if your country allow, uh, has visa free access to uh, the country here. Um, and so you'll be given a slip which counts as a visa. I think it's like 90 days and yeah, you're, you're, you're good to go. Um, once you get here, you can take taxi from the airport to your hotel. You can take a shared taxi, which is slightly cheaper, um, but they ha you have to wait for it to fill up. And then alternatively, you can actually take a train, which is uh, the che uh, much cheaper option. So yes, uh, just book it the same way as you book any other trip. Let's have a look. Um... um Yes. So we travel. Is it uh, alone? Is it better to travel with a group? Is it better to travel with a group or alone? It's all preference. Like personally, I like traveling by myself, um, like with family. I don't like going with a group. The reason why I don't like going with a group is because I feel a bit kind of like it's rushed um, and I feel overwhelmed. I like to take my time. I try to do my research from beforehand. Although having said that, the first time I came, I did actually go with a group. If I had the choice and I knew a bit better, I wouldn't have gone with a group though. Um, I try to do my reading beforehand, educate myself and come here. You can easily grab someone here who can help you out, tell you a little bit more about the history, that kind of stuff. So I personally would say, but it all depends on your preferences. Um, if you want things to be taken care of at ease, then group. Um, if you like exploring a bit more, you're a bit more adventurous, a bit more intrepid, uh, want to take your time in places, want to go at your own pace, 100% recommend going without a group. Um, but having said that, when groups do go, they do give you plenty of time to just soak it all in, absorb everything, like sitting here, relaxing near the Dome of the Rock, that kind of stuff. But it can be uh, slightly, slightly rushed as well. 
Um, let's have a look at the question. Uh, was the visa seal on your passport? Is there a stamp in your passport that you give? A, a very basic answer to that is no, they don't. Um, what things um, what things you mustn't miss whilst visiting Alexa in, in, uh, in Jerusalem? A very, very good question this is. So this is kind of like a travel tip more than a safety tip. Um, there's obviously Masjid Al-Aqsa, right? Masjid Al-Aqsa should not be missed. Now, within Masjid Al-Aqsa, you have the Masjid Al-Qibli, which is the one with the more kind of like silver dome. You also have the Dome of the Rock. In the Dome of the Rock, you have um, the, the kind of uh, stone uh, cave area, the stone which is believed that the Prophet ﷺ ascended to heaven um, uh, from that very stone, but it's not 100%. Um, you have the Babur Rahma Cemetery, which is where Ubaid ibn Samit anhu and Shaddad ibn Aus anhu are buried. Um, you also have within the Al-Aqsa complex, I haven't even finished, the basement, and in the basement you'll find a library, which is uh, UNESCO verified. Um, they class it as one of the most important Islamic manuscript library uh, collections in the world. They've got over 130,000 books. Really interesting. You've got Musalla Marwani, which was actually used as a, um, uh, a, uh, a stable at the time of the Crusaders, like around a thousand years ago. And you can actually see on the pillars, there's like holes at the bottom where they used to tie the horses. Um, what's interesting about that is it's actually they say that Musalla Marwani was actually the um, uh, the actual ground level for Masjid Al-Aqsa back in the days, okay, thousands of years ago. Um, but what's more interesting is in Musalla Marwani, uh, Musalla Marwani, by the way, is the largest prayer hall in all of the Aqsa complex. Um, what's interesting about Masjid Musalla Marwani is that you have somewhere, uh, a, a, a place in there called Mar Maryam's Chamber, um, it, it, uh, Maryam alayhi salam. So uh, Isa alayhi salam's uh, mother, um, she used to, Maryam alayhi salam, who's mentioned in the Quran, um, she used to actually pray in there. She used to do her worship in there. So it's really interesting to go in there. It's the place where Zakaria alayhi salam used to come to her and say, where have you got all these fruits from? And she used to say, it's from Allah. She used to get a lot of um, out-of-season fruits. So that's in Musallam Marwani. You've also got in the complex graves scattered around. Um, you've got um, the Burak Mosque where... On the wall, you'll see a ring. It's believed that the Prophet Sallallahu tied his horse there when he came here on the night celestial journey. Um, and then you've got the beautiful Qibli Masjid. Uh, so these are some uh, a few sites. Um, there are some hidden gems. If you want to know more about hidden gems here in Masjid Al-Aqsa and also just generally around the country, I recommend visiting my Instagram. The link for that is in the description. Um, you will actually find uh, quite a few reels with um, uh, with hidden gems. So, so that the other sites outside of Masjid Al-Aqsa that you shouldn't miss is Masjid Al-Umar, which is near the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. That's worth visiting. Um, it's believed that when Umar radiallahu anhu came here, he actually <clears throat> um, would was told um, to take the keys to the church. And he was entrusted with it, um, and he actually built Masjid Al-Umar as well. So that's a, a very, very important point uh, to keep in mind. That's a very, very important site as well. I'm just checking my mic's working. Yep, it's fine. All right, okay, so Masjid Umar, you've got the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Um, I may be missing things here, uh, hopefully not. Um, mustn't miss. Uh, you, you must go to Hebron to visit Masjid Al Khalil. Um, this is where Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, is buried, Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam, is buried, Prophet Ishaq alayhi salam, uh, Ishaq alayhi salam's wife, Rifqa, who is also known as Rebecca alayhi salam, also Sarah alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam's wife. Amazing vibe there. It's a bit difficult to, not difficult, there's checkpoints to enter, uh, but once you're inside, it's, uh, it's absolutely phenomenal. Um, you must go to Bethlehem because that's where um, uh, the Church of Nativity is. They say, not 100%, according to Christian tradition, he was born there. But the city is really nice though because there's a lot of Muslims there and um, there's, there's a lot of Muslims and Christians and this kind of unity, uh, harmony there. Um, but also there's Masjid Umar there. They say that there's another Masjid Umar that is separate Masjid Umar. Say that Umar radiallahu anhu, he prayed around that vicinity. Um, you must go to, if you have time, to Jericho, which is one of the, it's the oldest city in the world and the deepest as well. It's really hot there in the summer. Um, and you must also go to Mount Nabi Musa, where supposedly Musa alayhi salam is buried. Um, there's Bab Lud as well. But I don't say that's a must visit. Must visit is Masjid Al-Aqsa, Hebron, um, Jericho, Mount Nabi Musa, uh, Bethlehem. If I've missed any, I'll um, put them up um, on on the text uh, on the screen here right now. Um, so let's have a look at some other questions. Right, um, what have we got? Um, where's the? What's the food here like? Okay, so the food here is like really good, man. Like um, 
there's not exactly a wide range it's not exactly indian cuisine or something like that but you have um like for example um shawarmas you have falafel hummus you have um, grilled food as well there's a restaurant called basti which is really good um, i've been told by a friend of mine um, there's also a few other places in the old city outside the old city there's cheap bites like street food you can get um, there's for example um, plenty of uh, nice kind of like juice drinks on offer everywhere nice coffees everywhere you can get them from five shekels up to 15 shekels um, there are also for example things like um, uh let's see um you can get like shawarmas in wraps or you can get them in bread um but i've kind of been surviving off shawarmas to be honest i i haven't really explored much in the way of food here um but yeah sometimes you'll see on the streets there's actually um long breads with falafel so that's quite a nice bite i guess um there's dessert shops around as well as selling pancakes and that kind of stuff so there's actually a quite a variety of food here um but it's not a wide variety like you'd imagine there are many snack shops available as well you can grab crisps drinks that kind of stuff all right next one is it uh yep yeah, i've done that one um what do they ask you at the airport when you're at the airport this is a really really good question and it doesn't have a very simple answer um it kind of all depends okay and it depends on maybe their mood it depends on your background it depends on um, stamps in your passport but roundabout I'd say they'd ask you things like um, remember it's all contextual so my context and my my context will result in different questions your context will result in absolutely different questions um, so they'll ask you like base questions what's your name what's your father's name um, how many times do you pray a day? Um, what mosque do you go to? Are you Sunni? Are you Shia? Where do you give your zakat? Um, uh, what charities? Yeah, what charities do you give your zakat to? Who do you uh, support when you give charity? What countries have you traveled to? Um, do you get in trouble with the police? Um, they may check your phone, um, and I'll come on to that separately actually. Uh, so the questions. Um, so me personally, I've been to Iraq, I've been to Syria, um, and so they ask me, tell me about your recent trip to Iraq, tell me about your recent trip to Syria, uh, and um, they'll, for example, say things like, um, um, which sheikh do you listen to? Um, so bizarrely weird questions sometimes, um, but be ready for anything. And remember what I said to you guys, uh, comply uh, and be sensible, okay? It's very, very important. Um, don't be overly friendly, don't reply back, don't get cocky with them. And remember, you will be emotionally drained. Just be patient, okay? Really, this you're going to come to Masjid Aqsa in the end of the day, so just relax, um, don't worry about it. So that's um, some questions they can ask you. In terms of uh, your phone, do they check your phone at the airport? Um, yes, they can, okay? Will they always? Not necessarily, but they, they, if they want to, they can. If they have reason to believe that there's something to see, even if they don't, they can check your phone. They'll go through your phone. They went through my Instagram. They went through my Facebook. Um, they went through my brother's Facebook. Um, they also went through my contacts to see if I've got a number, uh, any contacts here. They also went through, for example, um, uh, uh, my uh, Instagram, I said, um, my contacts, my messages, my WhatsApp, that kind of stuff. So whilst one officer talks to you, the other checks your phone. So, um, yeah, just just keep that in mind just keep that in mind and make your decisions uh, based on that this is really really important um uh okay let's see if the uh, precision person landing questions how is the atmosphere here um this is a good question um Oh yeah, I'm gonna talk. I've got some good questions. How's the atmosphere here? Atmosphere is amazing here. Okay, so um, you'll be uh, walking around here, around Jews, around Christians, and there's absolute harmony here. Everybody's just getting on with one another. We were treated with um, treated with absolute uh, kindness everywhere we went. Whether we were dealing with people of uh, people from the Judaism background, Christi Christian background, um, no religion background. Um, Muslims, everybody treated us nicely. We had no issues. Um, uh, yeah, th there's really nothing else to it. Uh, Alhamdulillah, they has been completely fine. Um, you know, the guards so far haven't given us any issues. I just enter Masjid Aqsa, I exit. Once I was asked for my, um, I was asked for my passport. And the thing to remember is that, you know, the, the guards that are around Masjid Aqsa, they, 
for me, like uh, for a lot of people, they'll say it's, um, you know, the fact that there are guards around the Masjid Al-Aqsa um, should make you feel a little bit more safer. Um, and kind of, I do agree with them with that because at the end of the day, um, it's, it's for your safety. Um, it's they're checking, etc. They're making sure that everything's okay. They're checking your passport, blah, blah, etc. So just keep that in mind um, that um, it's very secure. It's very safe. Uh, everybody's friendly with one another. Um, I actually uh, traveled around using public, just to give you the, a picture, I traveled around with my jubba on, with my hat on, um, to many cities, uh, not many, but a few cities, I uh, use public transport. Um, so I had no issues whatsoever. The atmosphere is really good. Um, and the other question that some, uh, someone asked was, um, yeah, uh, this is more of an extension of the previous. Is it safe considering everything we see in the media? Honestly, guys, you are seeing like maybe 0.001% 0, 0, 0 of what the reality is now. Look, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, there is tension here. There is, you know, occupation here. There are problems here. But however, coming here as a pilgrim, coming here as a tourist, coming here as a visitor from outside is absolutely safe. Honestly, as, especially once you enter into Masjid Al-Aqsa and you walk in. Look, I'm just sat here by myself in the morning, Saturday morning. Uh, it's quite relaxing. It's probably one of the best times to come, actually. But whatever time you're walking around, I've walked around by myself with my brother, with my wife. Um, I've used all options. I've exhausted all options. I've, 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 I've been to the cemetery alone. I've been to the Christian quarter, the Jewish quarter. Um, I don't think I've been to the Armenian quarter yet. I've walked the streets by myself. It's completely safe, guys. So that's nothing to worry about. Whether you're Muslim, Jew, Christian, atheist, whoever you are, you can walk around absolutely freely. No one will say anything to you. No one will bug you. Everybody just gets on with one another. I've come here twice and I've never, alhamdulillah, had issues. And the same goes for many other um, Muslim, Christian, Jewish travelers that come here. People just get on with their lives. People have come here for a certain purpose. So get that out of your mind. What you see in the media and things like that is a completely, it's very, very, very kind of like specific to a, a, a very a specific event. And unfortunately, tabloids and media and, and press and news their job is to worry you, is to concern, is to give you stuff that you don't need and, and, and to make you think that, oh, um, you know, uh, I should be worried about this. I should be worried about that. You shouldn't be worried about it. Just come. Come here. Enjoy yourself taking the blessings of these, uh, of these lands. So, no, it's absolutely safe and forget what you know. Just completely erase and unlearn what, you, what you've seen from the media. And this is me telling you, not only me telling you, but also... People who live here will tell you the same thing and people who have been here many times will tell you the same thing. Um, is it safe for, a, I think I've touched on, is it safe for a woman to travel alone? I'm not sure if I have, I'll, I'll just say it again. Um, it's safe for a woman to travel alone. However, um, would I recommend it? No, because, because personally, no, because I would say first and foremost is that the, you will be waiting, you will have a very hard time in the airport and you will have a very hard time returning in the airport as well because women who have come here alone I've read blog posts about women who have come here from the UK alone. They've had a very difficult time as they're passing through the checkpoint, as they're leaving the checkpoint, as they're, I'm sorry, into the airport and exiting the, exiting the airport as well. Just checking my mic again. So yeah, just keep that in mind. That's really, really important. And the other thing to remember is uh, that, um, yeah, so that's, if, if you can hack that though, fair enough, um, you can come by yourself. Um, and I think I've got one last question. Let's see. Um, the best time to visit, there is no best time, you can come all year round. Obviously the winter gets very cold, the summer gets about 30, 31 degree. Um, if you want uh, mid temperatures, April maybe, would probably be best, April, May, maybe October, November. Um, but Christmas, Easter is very busy time and it can also be quite expensive as well. So do keep that in mind. Um, let's have a look. Um, I've touched on that. Yeah. Um, do you ever get refused a service because you're Muslim, visibly Muslim? No. Simple answer, never. Everyone will serve you uh, well here, wherever you choose uh, to go. Um, yep, let's see. Uh, um, do you get troubled at the air? I think this is a nice question to end on, actually. Um, do you get troubled at the airport when leaving? Um, actually, not the last question. Do you get trouble at the airport when leaving? It all depends. You could, you, you can't. And it, let's just all go back to what I said at the beginning about being prepared, emotionally prepared, um, being patient, being compliant. So keep that in mind. You may and you may not. 
Um, we've also got another question. Should you carry a passport? Are you on all times? A simple answer is yes, because you never know when you're going to have to show it. You're never going to know how, when you need to actually verify who you are. So keep it with you at all times. Whilst it's safe to travel here, there are kind of uh, moments when it's going to be necessary. Um, it could be for no reason. They need to check your passport to verify who you are. Uh, so should you carry your passport? Um, yeah, so I've got that. Um, to go with the group, no. I think I think that's my questions done. But guys, if you guys have any other questions, please put them in the comment section. I will be more than happy to answer them. I love answering these questions. They're very interesting. They really get me excited, especially when I think about people coming to Aqsa. May Allah SWT bring you all here. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you found it beneficial. I hope you can enjoy the view of the, the Dome of the Rock as well. It's been really uh, interesting um, opening up about these um, questions. Um, and honestly, guys, I'll tell you, you know, um, Aqsa is waiting for us. Um, you know, what's waiting at the airport really? Like, I've been here for a week now. I'm going back today. You know, when I think back at it, I think to myself, waiting at the airport, all these fears that I had, it's so worthless. It, it, it's not worth your time. It's like you come here and you completely forget about everything. Yeah, when you're going back home, you start thinking about it again. But, and I've had the time of my life here, honestly. And I've not had any issues. I've answered all your questions as well. And to be honest with you, it's, it, 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 it deeply impacts you, this place does. Yeah, um, for a long time when you go back. The first time when I went back, it impacted me for a long time. Come here, pray your salah here. The Prophet ﷺ told us to come and pray two rakats in here. You will get 500 times more reward. By praying in here and also you know similar rewards to uh, hajj in that you will go back home like uh, like you were born as a new baby so you know it's really really uh, an amazing place a very blessed place with so many prophets around sahaba uh, the prophet وسلم, came here there's amazing people the the people here are super amazing palestinian people the locals they are so so friendly always willing to help you you know you'll end up getting free meals uh, free drinks and stuff like that and, and the complex itself is just wonderful. You can just spend hours in here. You can spend all day. So anyways, guys, I know this has dragged on a little bit, this video. hope you found it useful. Please do let me know if you have any other questions. May Allah SWT bring you here. What are you guys waiting for? Go and book your ticket now. Don't think about it. You have to come to Aqsa. You have to come and pray in here. You have to come and learn about the significance. You have to meet the people here as well. It's absolutely incumbent upon all of us. It's not expensive. Uh, yes, it's slightly expensive here, but it's not that bad. It's all worth it. Being here is one of the best feelings in the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring you all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept um, uh, uh, um, your intentions and share this video with other people. I haven't come across many uh, videos about Aqsa and I really felt like I needed to fill that void. So I'm hoping that it helps people, inshallah, um, from a very kind of layman's perspective. There are many people out there who can help you with other things, uh, logistics, um, uh, history, archeology, span significance, that kind of stuff. Scholars are out there, travel agents are out there. Contact the right people, be prepared. The Prophet Sallallahu told us uh, to plan well. So, you know, plan well, uh, look into things. And this exactly what you're doing right now, watching this video, is you planning. Um, so, yeah, keep that in mind and really come here. Um, heaven on earth, heaven on earth, honestly. Like, that's how, that's the feeling that I get. It's wonderful. I could just, you know, sit here all day long. Uh, beautiful uh, landscapes, uh, blessed place. It's got the best of everything. So, um, yeah, guys, please do like. Um, Please do subscribe if you want more videos like this um, and also comment on the video. Did you like it? Did you enjoy it? Um, did you find out something new? Do you have a question you need to tell me? Have you been here before? Is there any other tips that you can share with us? These are just some questions that I got from my viewers on my Instagram and follow me on my Instagram guys because on my Instagram I have actually like a lot of behind the scenes, a lot of reels, a lot of interesting quicker clips, not long clips that you can watch and learn about if you want to come to Mashal Aqsa or anywhere around the world. So please be sure to, uh, to visit my Instagram. Anyways guys, I'm going to head off now, walk around the complex, um, uh, take it all in. It's my last few hours here. Um, and guys, uh, please uh, be sure to uh, support the channel in any way you can. Um, inshallah, I will see you guys in another video from wherever I uh, end up. Um, and yeah, uh, it's been really, really interesting talking about all this. Take care, guys. And I will see you guys in another video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu from Masjid Al-Aqsa in Jerusalem.